Hey everybody, welcome back uh, on the American Battlefield Trust coverage of uh, obscure or unknown Antietam. And you know, I think some of you know that there are three main bridges, stone bridges spanning Antietam Creek in 1862 on the battlefield. So there's the upper bridge, the middle bridge, and the lower bridge. And here we stand at the middle bridge. Hold on, wait, the middle bridge isn't there anymore. Here we stand at the lower bridge or Burnside Bridge. Wait, there's buildings behind it, it's not there. So obviously here we stand at the Hooker Bridge or the Upper Bridge. Hold on, wait, this bridge looks bigger. Dennis, help me out. Dennis Fry, Save Historic Antietam Foundation. Well, Gary, you are at a stone bridge of Antietam. This is a four arch stone bridge known as the Antietam Ironworks Bridge. And we're located now south of the battlefield. If we, if we went that direction, if we went upstream, we went up literally elevation to Burnside Bridge, which would be the next stone bridge above this one. Via the creek, it would be almost three miles from here because the creek just curls and turns. It's like a serpent, serpentine movement getting down here. We are very close to the Potomac River. The Potomac River is this direction, less than 200 yards from here. So we're almost at the very end of the Antietam Creek, draining from Franklin County, Pennsylvania, south through Washington County, where Sharpsburg and Antietam Battlefield is located, here to the Potomac, Potomac River, very, very nearby. So why are we here? Was this part of the battle? No, no fighting here. Was it part of the campaign? Absolutely. This bridge is original, not a reconstruction. This bridge has been standing here since 1832, built 30 years prior to the battle. The bridge, as you can see, still carries modern vehicular traffic. So it was built to last. I've been here in floods where this bridge is completely submerged beneath the Antietam Creek. It's gone, but it's not gone. The water subside and there it is standing now for what a hundred, almost 200 years. It's on, it's coming up on its 190th birthday, the Antietam Ironworks Bridge. We refer to it as the Ironworks Bridge because there was a large industrial complex here that truly was an iron manufacturing complex where they smelted iron and then they produce products from that smelted iron. So Antietam Iron Works. Now, if we were flying, if we could just hitch a hike with a crow, we are only about a mile and a half from the Burnside Bridge. That's how close we are to the actual battlefield. But I said this was really integral to the campaign. And what I mean by that is the road over this bridge is the Harpers Ferry Sharpsburg Road. Running from Harpers Ferry, that direction, about eight miles from here, to Sharpsburg, that direction, about two miles from here. And you've probably heard of the great cavalry escape from Harper's Ferry, right under the nose of Stonewall Jackson. Gary and I have talked about this before, where Harper's Ferry is being strangled by Jackson. The Confederates have the mountains, and on the night of September the 14th, Sunday the 14th, three days before Antietam, 1,400 United States cavalrymen get out of Harper's Ferry. And in the darkness, they go galloping north trying to find anybody in the Union Army to make them aware of the desperate situation at Harper's Ferry. And ultimately, they come across the Antietam Creek over this bridge. So they're not stopped. The bridge is open. There's no opposition. Eventually, those cavalrymen make it all the way to Green Castle, Pennsylvania. In fact, they capture Longstreet's reserve ammunition train along the way and escort it to Green Castle. So why is that so important? Well, George McClellan knows about this cavalry escape. The man who leads the cavalry escape comes down here to the battlefield by September the 18th, the day after the big fight. McClellan would know about this bridge from Benjamin Grimes Davis, Colonel Davis. McClellan would also know about this bridge from local scouts and local citizens. He would even have maps that would show the location of this bridge. Why then are we here? Well, not only is it because of the cavalry escape, but what could have happened? Let's assume for a moment that Robert E. Lee does not withdraw on September the 18th, doesn't leave, still continues to hold that high ground there near Sharpsburg. And McClellan's trying to figure out, what do I do? Now, we already, we've already talked about he can't just blast straight ahead because Lee holds such great high ground there. That's not going to succeed. But we always know you can try to get around the enemy. And what a perfect opportunity. We're on the Union side of the creek right over there. Burnside's men aren't far away. Burnside's not been defeated. He's still got a lot of fight left in him. And so McClellan could have taken 
Burnside's Corps. He could have taken the newly arrived Fifth Corps. He could have taken elements of other corps that have not seen as much service. And on the 19th, and Lee had been so bold, so dared to continue to stand on that ground at Sharpsburg, this was a way around him. This was a flanking maneuver that could have been occurred, not unlike the Chancellorsville move that Jackson, Jackson employs, but not nearly as far, not nearly as difficult. This would have only been a, a, a walk of about four miles total to be able to outflank Lee, get behind him using this bridge. I have no doubt that one reason General Lee decided to retire back into Virginia on the night of the 18th and 19th, he knew about this bridge too. And he knew he did not have the soldiers, the manpower, the artillery to guard the line north of here all the way down to this position. No way he could hold it. And so this was a vulnerable point for Robert E. Lee. It was an opportunity from George McClellan had Lee decided to stay on the 19th, but he left beforehand and the bridge falls into military obscurity. But it could be a bridge nearly as famous as the Burnside Bridge, it's Sister Bridge, just a few miles to the north. One final thing, notice the four arches on this bridge? Well, that's because we're near the mouth of the Antietam, almost in the Potomac. The creek's getting wider, the creek's getting deeper, and the creek's getting stronger as it continues to fall down the slopes towards the river. So here we have the biggest bridge across the Antietam, four archer no other bridge has four spans that's so great dennis thank you so much i think uh you know may, maybe we do ourselves a disservice by focusing on the most popular parts of history and don't get me wrong but, you know when i go to little bighorn i want to go to custer hill and when i go to gettysburg i want to go to little round top and pickett's charge there's a great place for that but maybe we do ourselves a disservice by only going to the places where it actually where the biggest stuff actually happened or, or the places that have become famous but rather Think about this, you know, imagine if this was the key campaign point. Imagine if there was a big fight for this bridge, this larger bridge than the others, man, which looks just as pretty and, um, and very similar. Um, with the exception of the arches to the other one. So think about that, you know. Uh, think about when we did some videos earlier this year at Gettysburg when we covered Pipe Creek. Imagine Pickett's Charge across the plains coming near Pipe Creek. And I think that might give us a more holistic view. So I thank you, Dennis, for all these cool thoughts about this place where I've driven but never stopped before. Maybe this will be another unknown Antietam place that you or y'all will come to. So thanks for watching. Thanks to Dennis. Thanks, Annalise. And thank you for supporting Battlefield Preservation and Education.